Hi right, guys, back again, and uh, as promised, here it is, my first Dyson uh, video, uh, and also the first Dyson that I've owned in 10 years or so. Um, I'll be the first to admit I've been a bit of a Dyson hater in the past. The reason for that was a DC-14 upright that I bought new back in about 2006-2007. Um, I didn't get on with it, didn't like it, I thought it was noisy, cumbersome, tools were rubbish. I think I had it about two or three weeks and ended up getting a moving instead which was a much better cleaner. But a lot changed in 10 years. Um, I've certainly changed, I've got fatter unfortunately, and I thought it was time to give Dyson another chance. So this is the model I went for, DC39 Animal. Now I got this off the uh, Dyson store on eBay uh, for 189 quid, uh, which I think is a bit of a bargain to be honest. It's sold as a refurbished machine, but to be honest, couldn't tell the difference between this and the new machine. It's absolutely immaculate. There's no sign of any use at all. Um, all the tools are brand spanking new in their wrapper. It's for all intents and purposes, it's a brand new cleaner. So for under 200 quid, I think that's brilliant. So I went for a cylinder this time rather than a upright, mainly because I've got a combination of hard floors, uh, carpets, rugs. So it made more sense to uh, go for the more versatile machine. So could this be the cleaner that converts me back to Dyson? Um, I don't know. Uh, what we're going to do, we go through some of the uh, the things I like and some of the things I don't like about it. And uh, I'll tell you what I think at the end. So keep watching. So first things first, uh, what does your 189 quid get you? Uh, by all accounts, quite a lot, to be fair. So this is the unit itself. Now, I must admit, when I took it out of the box, I thought, you know what, this feels a bit flimsy and plasticky. But it seems to be pretty well made to be honest. It seems to stand up quite nicely to everyday knocks and bumps, etc. Um, the bin is a bit flexible, it's got some give in it. I don't know whether that's a good thing, like I say, it seems to absorb bumps, etc. Got these two huge wheels at the back which make it pretty manoeuvrable. Uh, it follows you around quite nicely without getting caught and stuff. Uh, you've got your tool dock there and uh, clearly marked pedals, so you've got your on off switch, cord rewind and your bin release there. Obviously, standard Dyson round plug, which I've always thought was pretty cool. So it's all pretty self-explanatory to release the bin. Just push that, lift it out, and you've got your filter there, which is washable. So it's a fairly low maintenance machine, to be honest. Obviously, you've got your hose and your standard telescopic wand. I'll be talking a bit more about that later on. Um, your bent end at the top there. Now one thing I really do like about this machine is the fact that you can take the hose off the bent end which uh, makes it really useful especially when you're doing like the car or upholstery, stairs, things like that. Uh, a bit like a pneumatic star hose. Um, I think that's really cool. One thing I don't like about the bent end is this suction release valve. Um, it's a little bit flimsy anyway but I just don't like the fact you've got to hold it uh, to keep the suction uh, valve open. It can be a bit annoying sometimes, but it does the job. And like I say, it's all pretty solid, pretty well made. Next up, you've got your air driven turbo head. It's got this pivoting joint on it, and obviously, two big wheels at the back. Makes it really easy to use. I'll go into a bit more detail about this later on, but apparently, it's got carbon fibre bristles. So, we'll be putting through that, that for its uh, paces later. Obviously you've got your small tools, you've got a standard stair upholstery tool and uh, a combination dusting brush and crevice tool. Now I must admit when I saw this I thought oh, that's going to be rubbish but to be fair um, I've actually found it really useful. Um, again I'll go into a bit more detail about this later. Um, next up you've got your anti-tangle uh, turbo head. Um, it's not bad, uh, it performs excellently but it's noisy, it's really, really noisy. Like ear piercingly noisy to be fair. So, to be honest, I think I'd just rather use a, a standard mini turbo tool. This one doesn't really offer anything um, over a standard one. I haven't got long hair, so this doesn't really get tangled up anyway. Um, but it does the job. And finally, you've got your combination floor tool. So, half floor and carpets. Uh, one thing I don't like about this is uh, something that a lot of vacuum cleaner manufacturers seems to be doing these days. 
um, which is replacing the bristles with these rubber squidgy type things. Um, personally, I think they're pants. I don't like them at all. But that said, this seems to perform fairly well on high floors. Um, again, I'll go into a bit more detail about that later. Right, so let's get started. Um, first criticism I've got of the DC39 is the uh, the wand. It's just a bit too short for me. Um, could do with an extra couple of inches on it. Also, the hose is a bit short as well. Now, as you can hear, it's not particularly noisy, which is uh, great. I can't stand noisy vacuums. Um, the standard floor tool is fairly good on carpets. It's got a plastic base plate, unfortunately. Um, that seems to be the way that most vacuum cleaner manufacturers are going these days, including pneumatic. But it's fairly easy to use on carpets. The floor tool has actually got its own uh, suction release valve on it, but I find on maximum it literally just sticks to the carpet or surface that's being cleaned and isn't particularly much use to be honest. Uh, it works much better with the uh, suction release valve released slightly. So, on to hard floors, um, it's really easy to select carpets hard floors, you just tap it like so. And back to carpets again, simple as that. Right, and into the kitchen, so let's see how the multifunction floor tool uh, performs on hard floors. Um, I understand it's a bit of an extreme test, um, but it could happen, you know, occasionally we drop rice and things like that on the kitchen floor. Um, it, unfortunately, it tends to snow plow uh, a little bit, but it's by no means the worst floor tool I've ever used. Um, but again, with the um, suction release valve, um, it seems to work better with the valve open slightly. Um, rather than on maximum, otherwise it just sticks to the floor. So the same test again now, but with the uh, carbon fibre turbine head, you can see straight away it does a much better job. It doesn't snow plough the dirt all over the place and um, it doesn't scatter either, which is good. It picks up really well on hard floors, which is surprising. Um, the other good thing to mention about the turbine head as well is that it's um, got a bypass system, so the dirt doesn't go through the fan uh, like on traditional turbine head. So, in theory, it should never clog. So, upstairs now onto the carpets. Um, just going to show you how to empty the machine. It's fairly simple, um, a little bit fiddly to do with one hand. And like all bagless machines, it literally goes everywhere. Unfortunately, that's just a downside to having a bagless cleaner. It's not Dyson's fault. Well, better clean that mess up. As I mentioned earlier, um, the turbine head has a bypass system. Um, so, unlike traditional turbo heads, the dirt doesn't have to go through the fan, so there's no risk of clogging the fan up or damaging the fan. Um, as you can see here, it coats pretty well with these huge chunks of dirt and dust. Um, no problem at all with those. Again, no problem with uh, larger debris and chunks. The turbine here seems to perform really well on carpets, it grooms really nicely. Um, I don't know how deep down it cleans, um, I don't know whether it's actually getting right to the bottom of the pile, probably not. Uh, there's actually no agitation there at all, uh, but let's face it, I've got plenty of old uh, Hoover up to do that job.
on to the small tools now. Um, as you can see, the multifunction uh, dust and brush is actually quite a nifty little bit of kit. I really did think it was going to be useless uh, when I first saw it, but it's actually pretty useful. So a bit of a health and safety warning for the um, anti-tangle uh, turbine head it is so blimmin' noisy, it really is. But like I say, it performs fairly well. Um, really, I don't think it offers anything above uh, a standard mini turbo tool. Unfortunately, my hair is not long enough to uh, try out the anti-tangle function, but you can see here it copes with the bigger chunks pretty well. So after all that, what do we think of the DC39? Well, it gets a big thumbs up from me. I think it's a great little machine. A um, few minor criticisms include the slightly short hose and uh, the telescopic wand uh, being a bit too short as well. Now, I'm only five foot seven and I have to stoop to use it, so come on dice and a couple of inches makes all the difference. Um, also, the multifunction floor tool um, isn't great. It tends to snowplow a bit on hard surfaces, but uh, you make up for it with a carbon fibre floor tool, which is great on all surfaces. So, like I say, that's a couple of very minor criticisms there. Um, I think I'm going to have this one as my everyday cleaner for quite some time. It's not too noisy, it's really easy to use. And uh, it gets a big uh, U5096 thumbs up from me. I really like it. Um, I'll report back in the future um, on its reliability, sort of long term. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I'll see you in my next vids, which will be coming shortly. So... Take care.